welcome everybody to Sugar Grove Online. And to any dads watching, I just want to say to you, Happy Father's Day. Today we're going to be continuing on in our Not Alone series, specifically picking back up where last week's sermon left off. Now don't worry, if you missed last week, I'll make sure we're all on the same page. In fact, maybe you didn't just miss last week, but you've missed all the weeks because you're new here. And if that's you, welcome. We're really glad that you're here and a part of this service today. My name is Doug Robinson, and I want to encourage you at some point today to visit our website, sugargrove.org. There you'll find a New Here, Start Here button on the homepage. And if you click that and fill out the form that comes up, Darlene Willis, who's our guest connections minister, will reach out to you this week and get you some information about Sugar Grove, like our mission to be for God and for neighbor, or why there seems to be hexagons wherever you look. And, and that reminds me, I need to interrupt this welcome and bring you all a very important announcement about hexagons. See, I was doing some reading this week, and I wondered if you knew that in 1873, an architect by the name of Bryce Leatherman decided to explore building a house with a hexagon floor plan. I mean, the world had seen octagon plans before, but Leatherman was venturing into new territory. His theory was that the perfect symmetry from what I like to call the perfect shape would allow him to create a house designed to open up interior space and let in more natural light. First of all, you're welcome. Second of all, we interrupt this very important announcement to bring you an actual very important announcement. For the last three years, we've had so much fun with Skill School. Our weeks of worship, fun, classes, new skills, and celebrating God's love for us. Even with everything going on, we refuse to believe that a summer could happen without Skill School. Yeah, a summer without Skill School, not on our watch. So we started dreaming and brainstorming. We locked ourselves in our offices going 17 days with no food or water. We lost all track of time. We didn't know which way was up um, or down. Maddie? Okay, that might have been a bit of an exaggeration, but then... But then it hit us like a bolt of lightning from the heavens, a bird descending from the sky as the roof of the church... Karen! Okay, that may have been a bit of exaggeration, but still, we figured out a way to have Skill School happen. Four nights live on Facebook and YouTube. Worship, a lesson, 12 amazing classes for your kids to go through, taught by some pretty incredible teachers plus skill school materials so that you can participate right along with us. It's online skill school and school's in session July 12th. Yep, we couldn't be more excited for you to go to art, karate, music, and so much more. So to register for this event, head to sugargrove.churchcenter.com. Now, don't mention to Doug that you missed his history lesson. You know about his thing with hexagons. Anyways, we'll be putting out more information as we get closer and closer. See you soon. These two forms are duals of each other and have half the symmetry order of the regular hexagon. The I4 forms are regular hexagons flattened or stretched along one symmetry direction. It can be seen as an elongated rhombus, while the D2 and P2 can be seen as horizontally and vertically elongated kites. I mean, each subgroup symmetry allows one or more degrees of freedom for irregular forms, and it's only the G6 subgroup that has no degrees of freedom but can still be seen as directed edges. It's pretty incredible when you think about it. Anyways, uh, back to the service. As I mentioned earlier, today is Father's Day, and we want to celebrate that. If we were in person, we'd have a bunch of popsicles or soda pops available at the end of the service. But for today, you'll have to endure, I mean enjoy, one of my favorite dad jokes. What do you call a can opener that doesn't work? A can't opener. You're welcome. Now, we also know that on a day like today, it's not all fun and games. For some of you, today highlights a loss or a broken relationship or an unfulfilled desire. And so I wanted to read this prayer and ask God to do what only he can, meet each of us exactly where we are today. So would you please pray with me? God, all who gather here are sons or daughters. And so we praise you, God, for the fathers everywhere who have given us life. For fathers compassionate, loving, kind, and full of wisdom, we give you, God, thanks and praise. For fathers worried, tired, and overwhelmed, we pray for peace. For those who have lost fathers, who have died and no longer live with us, but who we remember them with affection and love, we pray for those that mourn. For fathers who have lost a child through death, we pray that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. For men who may or may not have children of their own, but act like a father to someone in need of advice, support, nurturing, and love, 
we pray for them to understand how much they are loved. For stepfathers who have assumed that role with love and joy, who have loved the children of another as their own and created a new family, and for adoptive fathers who have heard the call of God to lovingly step forward for those that are in need of their care, we give God thanks and praise. For new fathers full of hope, for longtime fathers full of wisdom, for the fathers yet to be and fathers soon to be, we pray for peace in this time of anticipation. For those that have shaped our lives without claim of family or kinship, for those who have taught us, guided us, shaped us, and molded us into servants of Christ our Lord, we give our thanks. Amen. Well, as I mentioned before, we're picking it back up where we left off last week, and we're going to follow the same unusual order, meaning the sermon's going to come before the worship again. Now, if you have a Bible, I want to invite you to turn to a passage that we read last week, Revelation chapter 5. And while you're turning there, let's review. We're in a series called Not Alone, where we're asking God to speak truth into our current circumstances through stories of Scripture to help us remember and understand we're not alone. So two weeks ago, we changed up our formula for the series, saying that chaos can cause crying as we read the parable of the persistent widow who continues to cry out for justice. Then last week, we looked at another form of crying out, worship. Our conversation centered around the first part of a definition of worship that read, Worship is the practice of affirming, proclaiming, and confessing an allegiance to God that, among other things, enables worshipers to see themselves as part of a reality that is larger than the visible reality on offer within the world in which the worshipers live. And so we read from the book of Revelation, a letter from John to seven churches addressing their current situation and sharing with them a vision God had given him, a vision that revealed God's heavenly perspective on history, so that what was going on in the present could be viewed in light of history's final outcome. Now, this letter contains many hymns of worship, and we read some out of Revelation 4 and 5. Through John's vision, we were able to join in with the eternal worship of God and Christ our King, and we're reminded of the larger story, the new song that we can sing because of Jesus and to Jesus. We read, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slaughtered. And you purchase people for God by your blood from every tribe and language and people and nation. You made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign on the earth. Worthy is the Lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Blessing and honor and glory and power be to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. So worship brings this larger picture into our present reality, transforming our hearts and reminding us we're not alone. In this way, worship feels like a blank canvas being covered as it's painted with bright colors and beautiful brushstrokes, revealing the larger story at hand. But we can't stop here. To do so would be to sell worship short. The act of worship can and does accomplish so much more. Worship isn't just canvas and brushes. It's cardboard and spray paint, too. Let's go back to our definition and now read the second half of it. Worship may include words, actions, and rituals, together with an overall pattern of values that constitute the orientation of one's life. Now, Gordley will expand on this idea that worship may constitute the orientation of one's life, as he says, depending on the cultural and social world in which the worshipers find themselves, Not only may worship facilitate the broadening of one's view of reality to include invisible spiritual realities, but it may also take on the role of countering other claims that are on offer within the worshiper's world. Worship orients one's life and counters the claim of others seeking to do the same. And you see, given our current circumstance where we have religious freedom, no king or throne, I worry that we might miss this counter and orienting that John's letter and the ongoing worship service offers to us that would have been rather obvious to the letter's first recipients. After all, in John's day, there was an emperor who sat on the throne. And while the murder of Christians by the Roman emperor Nero would have passed by now, the persecution by the emperor Domitian, a counter to the way of Jesus, we would say, was likely underway. 
In fact, John's vision and this worship was so connected and counter to the Roman imperial vision of his day, one writer describes these hymns as a celebration of confrontational resistance. It's why a common theme throughout the letter is conquering through faithfulness to the way of Jesus, as John urges perseverance of faith among his readers. In a world where inscriptions and hymns and parades were put on for Roman rulers, who were men described as a gift from the gods who bring about the blessings of safety, peace, prosperity, future, and the rule of law, John's vision is counter. To join in the worship is resistance. And it wasn't just in the fact that the culture of their day had a king and throne. The Roman ideology, the Roman way of doing life, the Roman economy, the Roman blessing, all of it butted heads with the ways of Jesus. So for some, John's urging of perseverance was because they were being persecuted. In fact, an example of that is in Revelation 2, 9 through 10, as John records Jesus saying to the church in Smyrna, I know your affliction and poverty, but you are rich. I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are, but are a synagogue of Satan. Don't be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Look, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison and to test you, and you will experience affliction for ten days. Be faithful to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. For others, though, Perseverance wasn't needed because of persecution, but almost because of the lack thereof. The acceptance of the Roman ideology by some of the followers of Jesus had eliminated a clash that should be there. In Revelation chapter 3, 15 through 20, in the letter to the church in Laodicea, John records Jesus saying, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. For you say I'm rich, I've become wealthy and need nothing. And you don't realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you may be rich, white clothes so that you may be dressed and your shameful nakedness not be exposed, and ointment to spread on your eyes so that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be zealous and repent. See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. Jesus says you think you're rich, but you're poor. You think you can see, but you're blind. This is serious business, so let go of what you've grabbed onto. Open back up to me. I'm ready to come in and fellowship with you. I'm ready to clothe you and make you the right kind of rich. As the readers of this letter engage in John's vision or join in the worship and cry out, they're given the opportunity to examine their current situation and allow their crying out to confront and counter the ways in which they've grown too comfortable. The ethic of Jesus' kingdom and the worship of him as king is bold statements spray-painted brashly on cardboard against the seemingly current regime. Worship, when embraced fully, it counters and orients. And I want to warn you, this is going to happen in two ways. In some ways, worship is us holding the cardboard sign. It's us saying to the emperors and kingdoms of this world, our God reigns. Other times, though, it will be the worship that holds the cardboard against us. It will reveal the way in which we've let go of God and latched on to the ideologies of the day. It will demand that we repent and reorient. But when we do, we'll find a Jesus who sits on the throne, anxious to come into our lives and fellowship with us. So may we sugar grove worship. May we announce to the world and to our hearts the good news of God and Christ our King. May we be confronted. May we reorient. May we resist. Let's say this prayer together as we begin to sing together and say to ourselves and the world, Our God reigns. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 
And there's nowhere else that I'd rather be Than dancing with you as you sing over me And there's nothing else that I'd rather do Lord, than to worship you So rejoice, be glad, rejoice, oh my soul For the Lord, your God, he reigns forevermore I rejoice, for my God reigns so rejoice, be glad, your Father and your friend is the Lord, your God, whose rule will never end. I rejoice, for my God reigns, my God reigns, and I dance the dance of praise, my God reigns, with a shout I will proclaim. My God reigns, and I worship without shame. My God reigns, and I will rejoice, for my God reigns. And there's nowhere else that I'd rather be than dancing with you as you sing over me. And there's nothing else that I'd rather do, Lord, than to worship you. So rejoice, be glad, rejoice, oh my soul, for the Lord, your God, he reigns forevermore. I rejoice, for my God reigns. So rejoice, be glad, your Father and your friend is the Lord, your God, whose rule will never end. I rejoice, for my God reigns, my God reigns, and I dance the dance of praise, my God reigns. With a shout I will proclaim My God reigns And I worship without shame My God reigns And I will rejoice For my God reigns Yes, I will rejoice For my God reigns Step down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am Altogether wonderful to me, the King of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake. Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to 
Dear God, Heavenly Father, thank you again so much for being our Father. We come now at this time, Father, to submit ourselves to you and to bow down and worship. Father, there are so many distracting things in our lives that take our thoughts and our focus off of you. Father, I pray that, that somehow we can, we can regain that focus and look more to you to guide our every step and every move. Father, I pray as we continue to worship that um, you will be with us Help us feel your presence. Help us feel the presence of our loved ones that we miss so much. Father, I pray for health and safety of our brothers and sisters. I pray your blessings on us as we try to navigate these weird times. And, and I pray that soon you will bring us back together again. Father, all of these things we pray in our precious Jesus' name, amen. The moon and stars, they wept. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, His blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse upon Him. When final breath He gave, as heaven looked away, the Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave, the war on death was waged, the power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake, the storm was rolled away, His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King. Rendered you defeated forever, he is glorified forever, he is lifted high forever, he is risen, he is alive. began to shake, the storm was rolled away, His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated. We 
sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is on the cross. Forever He is glorified. Forever He is lifted high. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me. All my fears and failures. Fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. You're my Savior. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Well, thank you so much, Quentin and Lisa, JT and Andrew, for leading us in worship. Uh, you can probably hear off my microphone that it's started to rain here at the church. And in some ways, that's kind of fitting, right? We, we ask God that he would rain down his grace and mercy, that he would bring life to our situation. And so we're just going to roll with it and Hope it's not too distracting as we enter into this time of taking a meal of resistance. We are a people who believe that God's kingdom overcomes all other kingdoms in this world, overcomes evil and sin itself through the death of our King. And so we remember this now as we take this first, this bread that represents Christ's body broken. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for um, just your victory and that you include us in it as we take this bread, which represents your son's body broken for us. Would we uh, use it as a time to just come back to you? Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness to the cross. And we pray all these things in your name and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We also then drink this juice, which represents his blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Would you pray with me? So God, my prayer today is that as we drink this juice and remember Jesus' blood poured out, that you would, by your power and by the power of the Holy Spirit, use it to push out other ideologies that we've grabbed onto. That you would use it to free our hands of other ways 
that we've latched onto on how to do life. And that you would open us up, open our hearts up to receive your kingdom, uh, your, your ways, your ethics. God, we want to live for you. And we know that that's all possible. It all starts at the cross. So Jesus, we thank you. We love you and we praise you. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, here now is Quentin and JT, Andrew and Lisa, to lead us in one final song. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, a fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay. A light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, and this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Well, before we sign off today, I want to let you know that later this week we'll be sending out an update in regard to the coronavirus and our physical gatherings as a church. So make sure you're looking in your email and on our social media for that. And then the other announcement is for Sugar Grove Kids. Oh man, I have been waiting all week to be the very first person to tell you that... Go ahead. What? So they missed all the hexagons? Hmm. That's fine. Listen, I'm on camera, so I can't really tell you how I feel about that. You know, okay, thanks for telling me. So I guess I have to change my announcements. Um, this first one is for Karen and Maddie specifically. Zoom meeting, 9 a.m. Monday. And I guess for the Sugar Grove kids, you already knew what I was going to say. But that's okay, because online skill school is going to be so much fun. Fun. Make sure you register at sugargrove.churchcenter.com, sign up, be a part of it, and yes, adults, you can watch and be a part too. Sugar Grove, I love you and I miss you. We'll talk to you soon. Grace and peace.